Hello, beautiful people. My name is Kira, aka Words by Kira. And in this episode, I'm going to be telling you guys two random story times. One is going to take place when I met the cast of Veronica Mars. And the other one is going to be a quick story time about when I was supposed to go on a date with a guy and it went completely not as planned. I make videos about self-love and connecting with others through interviews to hopefully lead to a better life. If you like content like that, then definitely hit that bottom right subscribe button you 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 hit that bottom right subscribe button and i would love for you to join the family all right so let's get into it okay guys so yeah let's start off with the cutesy story first so this is when I decided to meet the cast of Veronica Mars. I was young when this show came out. I don't know if you guys remember, it featured Kristen Bell. I think they even had like a reboot recently, but yeah, Kristen Bell, Francis Capra, Percy Daggs III. Those were like the main characters on the show and I was so into it. She was like this teen detective. Her father was a detective and her best friend was murdered and everyone thought that her father failed with the case and that he didn't catch the right guy. So like the community turned on him and little did the dad know, but Veronica Mars played by Kristen Bell was actually basically running her own complete detective office in a way in her high school. And she was solving all these other cases. But the big overarching case was to figure out who murdered her best friend. And it was just so much drama. Her boyfriend and her broke up because it was her her boyfriend was her best friend's brother. So yeah, it was just a lot of different plots and storylines. I love a mystery. I'm so into detective shows and trying to crack cases. Like in another life, I'm telling you, I probably was a detective, like for real. I'm that into it. I have to figure it out. So okay, my whole family knew I was obsessed with Veronica Mars. It was no secret. Um, and I just remember my mom actually told me like, oh my gosh, the cast of Veronica Mars is actually meeting fans in New York, in Manhattan. Like, do you want to go? And I'm like, of course I want to go. And I actually think it was around the holiday season, if I'm not mistaken. So my parents and I, I think, was it just me and my mom? Yeah. So just me and my mom, we decided to head to Manhattan so that I would be able to meet the cast of Veronica Mars. I was so, so, so excited. And it happened at Macy's. And I remember I got there. The line was pretty long, but we got there at a really great time. So I was near the front and I was so excited. Like I wanted to meet Kristen Bell so bad, but I also had a very big crush on Francis Capra at this time. He also played the boy in Kazam featuring Shaq. Do y'all remember that movie? I'm really showing my age. I'm 29. So I don't know. I don't know if like some youngins are watching, but <laughs> that was a, a movie that I really enjoyed when I was younger. Yeah. And I always thought he was cute. He also was in um, a Bronx tale. He played like the young Collegero. So yeah, that I had a crush on him anyway. So I remember I was standing in line with my mom and I was really, really nervous. I probably was only like 15. So social media was around, but it wasn't like today, you know, it wasn't just on your phone. You couldn't just like FaceTime, you couldn't live stream, you couldn't do an Instagram story. None of that really existed. I don't even think Twitter even, ex yeah, Twitter didn't even exist yet. So it was very much just like, maybe you had a phone if you were lucky with the camera. I don't even think my phone had a camera and if it did, it was probably super dusty. So yeah, I had like no selfies or anything, but whatever, I was there, I was really there, okay? So I'm waiting in line and I remember the actor Percy, he was like walking up and down the line with like a video camera. And you gotta think like, this was probably this kid's like biggest show thus far. So it just like, it was such a new and thrilling experience for the fans. It was super, you could tell it was like super new and thrilling for him as well, being that he was an actor on like a hit show. So he's like, wow, we're here today. He's like filming it. He was doing selfie style. He was like, oh, we're here today. Like we're meeting everybody. We're meeting the fans. And he stopped right in front of me. Okay. He stopped right in front of me. I was flattered, but I was so nervous. At this point in my life, you guys, I was incredibly shy, like very, very shy. I still have that sense of shyness at times when I'm in new surroundings, 
but at my core I am definitely a very social person so I don't really show my shyness as much anymore but it can still flare up but at this time I was still very much shy especially if I was in an environment I didn't really know like that so he comes up to me stops in front and he's like hey what's your name what's your name what did I do what did I do this was me <laughs> my mom literally had to step up like her name is Kira her name is Kira she's a fan she like she no, no she didn't say all that my mom wouldn't go that hard <laughs> she's more smooth than that my mom was like oh her name's Kira and he was like oh hi Kira and I was still like <laughs> and it's so funny because I really liked his character but he wasn't even my favorite you know oh I don't know if he would ever watch this you were dope though you were dope but like I was still so so nervous and I just remember my mom like he walked away he like did like a little chuckle walked away and my mom was like girl you gotta get your voice get your voice like where your voice at <laughs> she's like he's saying hi to you you can't even say anything she's like it's okay and I'm like dang you're right like as soon as he left it took a few freaking seconds but finally I got my voice back and I was like dang you're right mom I'm slipping I'm, I'm slipping like, I can't even say hi back. Whatever. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to dust it off. I still have time. We literally are in line for us to go up, say hi. And they were like signing. I think they were signing something for us. Unfortunately, I have no idea where that is. But I got the memories to pull me through. Okay, so I finally get to the front. I see Kristen Bell. First of all, she was so beautiful. Like, just such a beautiful woman. She already looked gorgeous in the show, but in person, she looked even better. Like, you know, some people, they look better in person or then some people, oop. You know, some people look different in person, you know. She looked significantly even better in person. And I saw her and I was just like, you're so pretty. And she was like, you're so pretty too. <sighs> Me? I felt really special. I was like, oh, she's sweet. And I said, thank you, of course. I really, really liked it. And then I remember I, Francis Capra was next to her. And then I was, I, I had my voice a little back, my asshole, especially after her really sweet compliment. And I just remember he was like, oh, hi, what's your name? Like he was like, <laughs> he was giving eyes or maybe it was just in my head because I was young. So yeah, let me not, now nah, he wasn't doing anything inappropriate y'all don't go crazy he wasn't doing anything inappropriate he was definitely just being nice like he smiled and i was like hi and that was that and then i went up to percy now again and percy was like oh hey and i was like hi and then i was like you know i really like the show a lot he was like i'm so glad that you like it i can't really remember exactly what we said but we actually exchanged a few words and it was a really sweet experience and that's pretty much how it wrapped up like i guess the highlight for me was kristen bell telling me i'm pretty too like that was very very sweet and a really good time and shout out to my mom because that would have never happened if she did not have the the way and the coin and the knowledge about it i wouldn't have been able to go so yeah shout out to my mommy okay so now the next story this story is a completely different vibe honey this one is like get some tea you got some tea at home yeah you might want to grab some tea because or i don't know just get something you know because this one is a lot this one's like stranger danger you know okay so boom <laughs> i am I was probably 18, 19 at this point. I was a freshman in college. Shout out Howard University. HU, you know, you know the vibes. I love my HU. So I'm at Howard and me and my friends at this time, a lot of us would like, you know, get fast food. We're in college. We didn't, we weren't really thinking about health that much yet at this time. So we would go to McDonald's a lot. And I remember this one day we went to McDonald's and I saw this really handsome guy standing outside of McDonald's. And he literally looked like Bob Marley, like he was very attractive to me. And I remember walking past him and he was like, oh, hi, like trying to be flirty, like, oh, hi, whatever. I can't remember what he said, but he was like being flirty towards me. So I'm like <laughs> playing it cool, like, hi, <laughs> hi, hi. And I go into McDonald's. Cause I'm like, you know, I'm not about to just stand outside. No, I want to get my McDonald's, whatever. I don't know what he's doing, but I have to get my McNuggets at the time. I don't even eat that anymore, but whatever. 
flashback. So I was waiting in line and I remember he came into the McDonald's and he was like standing by me trying to like flirt. He was like, oh, what's your name? And I was like, oh, Kara. But I wasn't really saying a lot because I didn't know him. And I don't know. I was just trying to be coy and I really couldn't catch the vibes completely. And I was being shy. I was still kind of shy. He was talking to my friends like, oh, I think your friend is beautiful. Like, I want to get to know her. Trying to like get them on his side. And my friends were like, oh yeah, oh yeah, that's Kira, blah, whatever. So then he asked me for my number after basically charming us all. And I gave him my number. Then that, I think probably that night or very shortly after, he contacts me and we had a phone conversation. I could already kind of tell from the conversation it seemed like he really wasn't trying to find a relationship. I mean, now when I look back, like we were all probably young. I was only 18, 19. He was probably like early 20s. So I don't really know what I expected, but I was like, eh, I don't know if he's really gonna be a gentleman and try to like actually court me and plan dates. So I kind of put him on the back burner. I could tell from when I spoke to him on the phone whatever forgot about him months go by and I'm hanging out with my roommate and we're like really bored we don't know what to do we're trying to find something fun to do and I don't know why y'all this is like very immature but that day we were like oh wouldn't it be fun to go on a double date okay a double date is fun can be very fun you know if the people involved have a compatible wavelength right but you can't like force that like to anybody watching anybody younger you can't force that like oh i want a double date with my friends to happen today but we're both single and neither one of us have any prospects for that but somehow i'm going to try to make that happen because when you try to force things a lot of times it does not go as planned because it's not natural it's not organic so my little big sister advice in this moment to whoever's watching if you need it do not try to force things. Do not try to manipulate situations because it can get dangerous. Yeah, wow. Wish I knew this at 18 or 19. But say la vie. <laughs> I learned it now. Okay, so she and I were bored. We have this, we talk each other up into like, yeah, we want to go on a double date. And she texts this guy who kind of liked her, whatever. He wasn't really doing anything. He didn't seem like he had any like fun plans. And then... I'm like, oh, maybe I should text that Bob Marley lookalike guy. Why? I don't know. I guess my phone was dry. Like, that was the option I had. So I remember I texted him like, oh, hey, what are you up to today? I'm hanging out with my girlfriend, like my friend. And, you know, we just are kind of looking for something fun to do. What are you doing? And he's like, oh, I'm actually like going out with my friends later today. But like, maybe later we could all hang out. So it seemed like he could kind of be on the double date wavelength. Child, no. Okay, so through the course of the night, me and my friend, let's call her Nikki. Me and my friend Nikki, you know, we keep going on with our day. We like go get food, we hang out, we hang out with our friends. But we're, in the back of our mind, we're still kind of hoping like, oh, maybe we could go on this double date with these guys. As the night goes on, so I remember he calls me, the Bob Marley lookalike called me. And he is like, oh, you know, I'm still out with my friends. But like, let's see, maybe later. So I tried to call him back because like time went by I tried to call him back to say like you know I don't think that's really gonna happen because it was getting later and I we didn't feel comfortable now hanging out at a certain time at night so we were like I wanted to communicate with him like you know let's forget it and try to hang out another time so when I called that number he called me from all of a sudden at this second number that I didn't know called me and he's like oh I'm sorry my phone is dying I'm calling for my friend's phone whatever and I'm like oh, okay and I explained to him, like, yeah, I don't think we should hang out, whatever. And he was like, okay, well, can I still, like, just come by um, your dorm? Like, we don't have to go anywhere. We could, you know, I just want to see you and say hi. Okay, this is a red flag. Like, I, looking back, this was dangerous. Thank God I was okay. At the time, I didn't think it was that dangerous because in the school that I went to, everybody knew where the college was. It was very common to know where the dorms were if you were in that area. And there were multiple security guards on the premise. So I felt like, okay, I can just stand by my door, by the security guards, and I think it's okay to just say hello briefly, not go anywhere with him, whatever. So <laughs> that's what I thought was okay to do. Okay, so then... There were multiple now times of me trying to call the first number, but then the second number called me back. 
it was just very odd y'all like just saying this story as a real adult it sounds crazy so fast forward now it's probably around like 10 30 11 it wasn't that that late and he calls me from the second number like oh I'm in a white car I'm in front of your dorm like I just want to say hi and I'm like okay so I tell Nikki my roommate I'm like and you could literally from the window you could look down and see everything you could see the front of my building so I tell Nikki I'm like okay I'm just gonna go down and like say hi to this person very fast and um you know I'm just gonna come back up I guess he just like wants to see me whatever um <laughs> So I go downstairs, I see the security guard right in the front. So I'm like, okay, like I, I feel safe. I feel okay. As I approach the car, child, there's only like very few cars in the front of this building. There's only one white car. He said, I'm in the white car. He said, I'm in the white car. So I walk up to the white car and I see somebody getting out. I see somebody getting out and this guy, this guy literally is not the Bob Marley lookalike. This is not the person that I met at McDonald's. Oh my Lord. Wow. Like <laughs> Ricky Thompson. Shout out Ricky Thompson. Wow. Wow. <laughs> That's how I felt. That's how I felt. I was like, so I'm... It's like I was walking towards him and then once I saw it was somebody else, I stopped and I was like, you're not the person that I met. And he's like, yes, I am. Okay, let me tell you all the differences in appearance. Bob Marley lookalike, he was like a lighter brown. He had locks literally like to his waist pretty much. This guy had locks to his chin. This guy was a darker hue, a little bit lighter than me, but not the same shade. He had these big glasses. His whole attire and clothing was completely different. He looked very flashy, very Southern, very like royal blue and white with the hat that matches to the side and like big, big chains. And it was just not that person, yo. It was not that person. And I say, no, you are not. He's like, yes, I am. I said, no, you are not. So now I'm walking away. I'm like walking back. But I'm still <laughs> running my mouth. And then he's like, okay, okay, okay. I'm not. But my friend told me that you're really beautiful. And I just wanted to meet you. And my cousin is this famous rapper in DC. Like, you look like a model. Would you want to be in the video? Oh, my word. Oh, my gosh. Oh, does that work on people? Did that work on people? I pray not. I pray everybody was safe. I pray everybody was safe. I pray that line did not work on nobody. That line did not work on anybody. Because what the heck? I said, no, thank you. And I just quickly went back inside, did not take one second longer to look at him or to speak with him. I was so through with it. I was so through with it. I went back upstairs. I told my roommate what happened. I told Nikki. She was like, what the heck? We couldn't believe it. And that's pretty much how it went down. Thank God I was safe. He wasn't trying to get me to go with him anywhere. He wasn't trying to um, come closer or touch me, thank God. But it was just very crazy. And I would never suggest anybody do that. Do not meet anybody you haven't hung out with before unless it's in a public area with other people around. I mean, now we have COVID. So, of course, this was a time when the pandemic wasn't happening. But just in general, like, don't ever do anything like that. Thank God. God was with me. And what I did was very silly. I don't suggest anyone does that. But I still at least knew that I wanted a security guard to be near me. But in the end... Anything could have happened when I went outside. So I would not suggest anybody do that. So yeah, that's pretty much that. I think the first number called me trying to apologize, claiming his friend just got his, this not even friend, this random guy got my number from his phone, but both of the numbers tried to call me again. I just blocked everybody to this day. I don't know what time escape, what type of scam they were trying to pull. And I'm so glad I never saw either one of them ever again. So yeah.
that is my two story times for today. I hope you guys enjoyed it. This is my first time doing a story time on here. Let me know how you feel about it. I'm just trying to get some different content for you guys to see how you like it, see what works, what maybe doesn't work. And I wish you guys the best rest of your day. Thank you for watching. Bye.